evening, my little angel. I'm happy to return to this English chapter after being late for a week due to mainly health-related reasons. I apologize to making you wait for so long and thank you for your messages and ask. Your care helped me recover fast. And now, let us go back to the central part of the episode. I think, actually, it wasn't until the previous Dodo Chan chapter that you did your best to dance to the music. But to hear it from many knowledgeable adults like in the story, and they were all people outside of the real life, not characters from fantasy, is also a good and happy feeling, isn't it? At the beginning of today's story, I want to go back to the previous episode to talk about the yin yang symbol, which was also the name of the school that Toto Chan loved too much, Tomoe. The yin yang symbol, as we can see, is a circle made up from two parts, white and black. The white part is yang and the black one is yin. A small black ring is present in the white part. In the black part, there is also a small white ring. As Headmaster Kobayashi said, this symbol symbolizes harmony, together creating the completeness of the body and mind. As we can see in the stylized damage, the small white circle in the black area is replaced by a brain, and the small black ring in the white space is replaced by a black heart, symbolizing physical strength. An example to make it easy to understand. When we exercise, maintaining strenuous workouts for many training sessions requires determination, which belongs to the brain part the white part, yang. But only due during our sleep, when the whole body is at rest, will the muscle strain in our body grow and become stronger. And that belongs to the black, the heart-shaped yin part. The muscle growth helps us have enough strength to continue doing the next, more difficult or demanding exercises. Just keep going. This yin-yang symbol also symbolizes that we should regulate what we do because the largest part of one color will turn into the smallest area of another. For example, when my little love wants to ask your parents to buy you something, you talk and ask gently and politely, and your parents will do it for you if they see it fit. But if you scream, fight, make your parents stressed, you do a bad thing for yourself, it's like going beyond the last chest part of the one color. Moving into the smallest part of the other, your parents should agree. But because the action is beyond your level, they change their mind. Not only does it have so many good meanings, this yin yang symbol is also ancient, born more than 6,000 years ago. The wisdom of the ancients introduced in Toto Chan's stories is not only so. Today's story chapter is about the first time Toto Chan attended a festival with long standing Japanese roots called the Holy Birthday Festival, also known as Shinto. In Japanese, the Holy Birthday Festival is called Enichi, celebrating the birth of the gods. Let us go to the festival with Toto Chan. The only thing I want. It was the first time Toto Chan had ever been to a temple fair in the middle of Senzaku Pond near her former school. It was a small island with a shrine dedicated to Benten, the goddess of beauty and music. On the night of annual fair, as she walked along the dimly lit road with mother and daddy, the night was suddenly ablaze with lights as she reached the fair. Toto Chan poked her head inside each of the little stalls. There were strange sounds everywhere squeaks, scissors, pops, and all sorts of enticing aromas. Everything was new and strange. There were toy pups, which you smoke by inhaling peppermint. They were decorated with pictures of cats and dogs and Betty Boop. There were lollipops and cotton candy. There were bamboo guns, 
tubes through which you push pieces of a certain kind of plant stem to make a loud pop. A man by the side of the road was swallowing sauce and eating glass. And a man was selling a shot of powder you rubbed on the rim of the boat to make it resound. There were magic gold rings that made money disappear, pictures that developed when exposed to sunlight, and the paper flowers that blossomed when dropped in a glass of water. As she walked along, her eyes starting this way and that, Toto Chan suddenly stopped. Oh look! she cried, seeing a box full of yellow baby chicks all chipping away. I want one, she said, pulling mother and daddy over. Please buy me one, please. The chicks all turned toward Toto Chan and raised their little heads to look at her wiggling their tiny bottoms and chipping even louder. Aren't they cute? Toto Chan thought she had never seen any quite so appealing in all her life as she crouched beside them. Please, she begged, looking up at mother and daddy. But to her amazement, her parents quickly tried to drag her away. But you said you'd buy me something. This is the only thing I want. No, dear, said mother quietly. These poor chicks are going to die very soon. Why? asked Toto Chan, starting to cry. Daddy drew her aside so the vendor couldn't hear and explained. They are cute now, Tosuke, but they are terribly weak and won't live long. You'll only cry when it dies. That's why we don't want you to have one. But Toto Chan has set her heart on having a baby chick and won't listen. I won't let it die. I'll look after it. Mother and Daddy kept trying to drag Toto Chan away from the box, but she looked longingly at the chicks, and the chicks looked longingly at her, chipping even louder still. Toto Chan had made up her mind that the only thing she wanted was a chick. She beseeched her parents, please, please, buy me one. Mother and daddy were adamant, we don't want you to have one because it will only make you cry in the end. Toto Chan burst out crying and started walking home with tears streaming down her cheeks. Once they were back on a dark road, she said, sobbing convulsively, I've never wanted anything so much in my whole life. I never asked you to buy me anything ever again. Please, please buy me one of those cheeks. Finally, mother and daddy gave in. It was like sunshine after rain. Toto Chan was all smiles as he walked home carrying a small box containing two baby chicks. The next day, mother had a carpenter making a special slatted box fitted with an electric light love to keep the chicks warm. Toto Chan watched the chicks all day long. The little yellow chicks were adorable, but alas, one stopped moving on the fourth day and the other did on the fifth. She shrugged them and called to them, but they didn't give a single cheep. She waited and waited, but they never opened their eyes again. It was just as mother and daddy had said, crying to herself. She dug a hole in the garden and buried the two little birds, and she laid a small flower over the spot. The box they had been in now seemed awfully big and empty. Catching sight of a tiny yellow feather in the corner of the box, she thought of the way the little chicks had cheeped when they saw her at the fair, and she clenched her teeth as she cried soullessly. Toto Chan had never wanted anything so much before. Now it was gone so soon. It was her first experience of loss and separation. Real life experiences do not always bring joyful emotions, but are always lively. My little angel, you may also have gone through more or less similar real life experiences in other things of your own. 
hearing Toto Chan said occasion may make you somewhat emotional, but don't take your time thinking at night to avoid trouble sleeping. Today's story time is over. I wish my little angel a good night's sleep. Kiss you long on your forehead. See you again next time.